My name is John Pacana. I'm an environmental project manager with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. On behalf of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, I'd like to thank y'all for coming tonight. Uh, we appreciate you being here. I know there's places y'all rather be. Uh, I appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy evening. I have asked Kevin Bowman, who also works with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, to help us keep this meeting running. So again, thank you for coming. Uh, I look forward to hearing your comments, and I'll turn it over to Kevin to get us started. Hey, thanks, John. Uh, so the meeting tonight's going to cover about three parts. Uh, the first thing we're going to go over tonight is, is what the FERC is, and what we do, and how our environmental review process works. And the review process focuses on the environmental side, and that's going to be kind of the theme of what myself and John and Mitch will be talking about tonight. Uh, the second part is going to be, uh, Mitch here, is also going to be going over the info about what the projects are in, that are in front of us. Um, just a brief review, just so everyone's on the same page about what the project is. Then the third part, and the last part of this meeting, will be to take your comments. And that's really the meat, that's the most important part about this meeting tonight. It's so that your comments help us know what's important about these projects, and what's important to you. Um, it helps us tailor our review process to, to the important things. Okay, so I'm going to get to the first part now. So the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. We are a federal governmental agency. Uh, we work out of Washington, D.C. And the commission part, you know, we got this commission in our name. Um, it is actually a commission. Uh, I'm not on the commission, but there are five members of the commission. And they are appointed by the president. And they have to be confirmed by the Senate. And those commissioners make every decision that comes in front of the agency on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so these decisions um, are on a wide range of things. Uh, they're going to be the ones who have to make the ultimate decision on whether to approve or deny this project. Uh, in addition to things like this project, they also have to make decisions on uh, whether or not to approve uh, hydropower dams, uh, natural gas storage terminals, storage of natural gas. Uh, the commission also regulates uh, electric electric uh, transmission line rates. Uh, so with a wide variety of energy-related topics, the commission has to make decisions on. Um, but before they make any of these decisions, they have to take into uh, consideration the environmental impacts of those projects. And we have to do that um, because of the National Environmental Policy Act. Uh, we call that NEPA for short. Um, and when we're doing this review process, or this NEPA, uh, the culmination of that review is what we call an environmental impact statement. And in just a second, uh, John will go over that uh, review process and how we get to the environmental impact statement. But once we're finished with that review, the commissioners have to look at that environmental impact statement, see what all the impacts of the project would be, see if there's any recommended mitigation measures, ways to reduce the impacts, and then they have to make an informed decision about whether or not to approve or deny the project. Um, I do want to point out that, that this EIS that I'm talking about, this, this document that has all these environmental information in it, it's not a decisional document. It's just simply stating what the environmental impacts are. Um, we haven't gotten there yet. Don't know exactly what it's going to be or how much they're going to be, um, but it's just a statement of what they are. So, even though we do these things that our, our agency regulates or looks at, the things like the dams, the, the electric transmission stuff, the, the natural gas stuff, we don't regulate, we don't have authority to regulate production of natural gas. That's where the natural gas comes out of the ground, um, or the gathering lines, or the local distribution of maybe where a gas line enters someone's house. Uh, so we really look at the larger interstate natural gas lines. And that's kind of a common misconception and distinction where it can kind of lead to some confusion. And I just want to point that out is, is that we have a regulation or authority over a very specific subset of types of pipelines. And that includes the projects that are in front of us that we'll get to in just a moment. Um, the pipeline uh, integrity standards, we don't set those, uh, but we do require any prospective applicant to meet uh, the current 
pipeline integrity standards, and those are set by the Department of Transportation's Pipeline and Hazardous Materials uh, Safety Administration. It's a bit of a mouthful, uh, but they do have uh, regulations for uh, material standards, uh, construction standards, operation maintenance, um, and we require all those applicants to meet those standards. Um, so I just wanted to kind of point that out. So with that, um, I'm going to turn things over to John here for a second to kind of go over the environmental review process. Thank you.